Nigeria. It has one of the fastest rates of deforestation in the world, but there are still pockets of forest left. In one of these pockets, a passionate team of conservationists are about to attempt the largest primate release ever. With 200 monkeys to release, will they be able to get them all out of safety? Beneath Afi Mountain lies some of Nigeria's last remaining primary rainforest. In this wild place, the forest is disappearing at an alarming rate, giving way to cocoa farms. But in this last remaining jungle lives a strange and charismatic monkey. And there are some who are fighting for its survival. We arrived here on an overland trip in 1988. And there was a lot more forest then, there was a lot less people. Cross River State was really a peaceful place with a lot of beautiful forests. And we became more interested in this animal called the drill, which nobody knew anything about. It. Very little was ever written about it, so we uh, started a program for drills. Every day, a truck makes its way from Drill Ranch into the local village of Puancho to buy animal feed and to pick up their staff who are from the local community. What Peter and his partner Liza started 27 years ago with a few orphan drills is now a hugely successful breeding program. And the time has finally come to release the first group of 200 into the wild. Emmanuel has fed the drills every day for 12 years. He's built trust that will be an important part of persuading them to leave their enclosure. So we are just gonna go in and feed them. They like mango, so that's why I see they're making some uh, screaming sound of hungry. Yeah. <laughs> so they always do that when they see their favorite food. I feed them three times in a day. Sometimes when we have less food, we give them two times. My favorite drill is, the, is, is Glory. Because she's, she's close to humans, she's friendly. She, she takes what I'm giving her by hand. She always makes a sign that will make you come close to her for grooming. There are as few as 3,000 drills left in Africa. They live in groups of 30, led by a large, brightly coloured alpha male. These smaller groups often band together to form supergroups of over 100, one of the largest group sizes of any forest-dwelling mammal. Fighting is a big part of life in such groups, but no tussle is irreconcilable, and as soon as they've started, fights are usually forgotten. Drill Ranch is the most successful breeding centre in the world for drills, and it owes much of its success to its forest location. Without trees, drills would have nowhere to sleep at night. The nursery was just set up as a little example of what people could do here. And it was one of, one of the things I, I loved the most uh, in this place, and it's what visitors absolutely adored as well. The idea of doing it was to show people, you know, you can do this stuff our biodiversity, our environment, is the mother of everybody here. And we dare not lose it. I'm a nature lover from bed. I always like to play with some little things like butterflies, lizards, and uh, I don't like killing, so and I don't even like eating bushmeat. I've been for 12 years working here, so I enjoy working with the primates. 
my favorite part of the day is when I make sure my animals have food and also have drinking water. It's the first time we are going to release the trays. We're gonna be tracking them, following them whenever they lose, and some of the mouths are gonna be our colors. Radio collars will be used to track the drills in the wild and gauge the success of the release. They've chosen to fit five dominant males with collars, as where these males go, it's likely a loyal group of females won't be far behind. It's an important part of such a pioneering endeavor and ultimately crucial for the drill's survival. With the drills ready, Peter meets with the release team. Emmanuel knows the drills better than anyone, so they ask his opinion on the potential problems. We have to go through and run all the what ifs, have backup plans, have people assigned. Do you think they're all going to leave or some will stay in the enclosure? Yeah, if you keep them hungry, they will all follow back. If they have something in their stomach, some will like to stay behind. Okay. Yeah. I mean, people should keep their distance from them, but be there if they decide to start going the wrong way to kind of discourage them distract them back onto the, and if the you're direction we want by them a to male? go. Hmm? And if you're challenged by a male? Just look down. Well, I don't want, I don't yeah, want people to At least run towards the wildlife sanctuary <laughs> boundary, <That's right>. Tony. <laughs> With the collars fitted and a plan in place, the team need to act fast. Everything now rests on tomorrow, the day of the release. As the sun goes down, the drills go up into the trees. Most of the drills have spent their whole lives in this enclosure, and they know these trees well. If the release goes according to plan, tomorrow they'll have the whole forest to choose from. Peter hopes that Emmanuel will be able to coax the drills out of the back of the enclosure with wheelbarrows of bananas and grass. Everyone else will stay out of sight so as not to scare the drill, forming a barrier in the bush. The idea is to direct the drills onto Appy Mountain, far enough from local farms where they would likely cause trouble. With the fence open, the drills are free to leave. All that's left is for Emmanuel to show them the way out. sets off like a primate pied piper. Three decades of planning are finally realized. But the work of Joel is far from done. The team managed to release 33 drills, but most of the group was held back by the supergroup alpha male, a Toro. With the release being more complicated than first thought, the drill ranch staff are preparing for a long project ahead. Peter is worried about the future. In the end, it's going to be for someone else to carry the ball. I'll carry it as long as I can. It's for others. And whether they do or not is not something I can ensure. And finding the people that have the ability to do this is very difficult. You need the passion. You need to be unreasonably optimistic. And uh, you need a huge number of skills. And so those people don't just fall off the tree. And you have to be willing to sacrifice 
pretty much everything. There's not too many people that actually are interested in doing that. Emmanuel's thoughts are with his now wild drills out in their new forest home, who he'll spend the coming weeks tracking. I will be worried I would miss them for working with them for a long time. I'm going to be there with them, following them wherever they go, identifying them in the morning, the one I've seen, the one I've not seen, watching, following them to see how they will survive in the world. So that's my job.